Hire your MD. When we finally nail this thing down, there's going to be a lot of unemployed doctors. There's going to be a lot of unemployed specialists. There's going to be a lot of specialists who have to drive a taxi or produce, do something functional in our society and, and actually help us out. To control our hormones, we want to work with the kind of foods we eat, the kind of thoughts we think, the kind of feelings we feel, and how well we're, we are respirating, how well we're ventilating. Your doctor hasn't told you this because, number one, he doesn't know it, and number two, the drug companies, which is where doctors get all their information from, aren't going to tell them. They can't make money. Can anybody make any money by, by our thoughts and by our feelings and by our respiration and by our foods? No. When we finally nail this thing down, if we ever nail this thing down, the, uh, the, the ticking, upward tick, uh, ticking of our health is going to be so dramatic. Can you imagine this? We, there can be a point that can be reached in our culture where we don't have to deal with degenerative diseases when we finally understand that it's all in our control. Another aspect, another factor when it comes to hormone health is fats. And this is especially true when it comes to our reproductive and stress hormones, which require a healthy liver for their production. The liver is the key organ when it comes to hormone health. The, the gonads are important, uh, obviously. The testes and the ovaries, they're very important, and so is the adrenal glands. But nothing is more important than the liver, and we got 100 million Americans with fatty liver disease. How do you think that's going to impact hormones? The liver detoxifies hormones. Remember, hormones have to be active for only a blip of a second, a fraction, a nanosecond. And the liver is supposed to clear hormones out. If you have a fatty liver problem or your liver's off processing drugs, statin drugs, hormone drugs, it's not going to have the wherewithal to purify hormones, to clear, to clear the body of excess hormones. And that could be big problems because these things are potent, especially the growth and reproductive hormones. All of these hormones require a, fun a fully functioning a, a, a fully functioning, firing on all cylinders, fat absorption, fat metabolism system. And that means also we have to be able to extract our fats from our foods, especially our essential fatty acids. And oh, by the way, our cholesterol. All of these hormones that we're talking about, all of these youth and vitality and fertility hormones, and even stress hormone, cortisol, and vitamin D for that matter, are really cholesterol. They're disguised versions of cholesterol. We say, oh, you know, cholesterol is a raw material for these hormones, but that doesn't really say it. That doesn't really give you a feeling for what we're talking about here. They're all cholesterol, literally, with a little bit of a tweak. They're cholesterol with a little tiny twist, if you will, but they're basically cholesterol. And this is another reason why you want to stay away from statin drugs, another reason to eat your eggs, another reason, reason to eat your cholesterol-containing foods, your organ meats and your dairy. I, did, I just did a video, by the way, on Critical Health News about cholesterol. We've, we've covered a lot of these ideas here in the, in the past on the program. You probably heard it. But the fact of the matter is, get this, the more cholesterol you eat, the less cholesterol your body needs to make. How do you like that? The best way to lower your cholesterol is to eat eggs. The best way, the best statin drug, the best anti-cholesterol medication is eggs, at least in terms of the cholesterol your body makes itself. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. We are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. And we do have a line open for you if you want to give us a shout, 844-236-6010. On our next program, we'll talk about yet another way to improve hormone health, another obvious way to improve hormone health in addition to respiration, thoughts slash feelings, two sides of the same coin, and the foods we eat. Those are the major control points when it comes to hormones, especially around fat. When it comes to foods, fatty foods and fat absorption, fats are so, so, so important when it comes to hormone health, so is cholesterol for that matter. These hormones that we're talking about are cholesterol. For in, in large part, you have two kinds of hormones in the body, or there's probably a few others, but two major ones. You've got the, the protein type hormones, they're called peptides, peptide type hormones, and then you have your steroid type hormones. And your steroid type hormones are all versions of cholesterol. And this nonsense, this crazy biochemical idea that cholesterol is the enemy and cholesterol causes heart disease. This is bizarre. If you understand biochemistry, there is some, it, it would be very hard to come up with a more multifunctional, more important molecule in the body than cholesterol. And there's no good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. That's more marketing baloney. 
gibberish, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Tell it, any medical professional ever talks to you that way. He's either infantilizing you, talking to you like you're in kindergarten, or like our bad guys, good guys idea, bad cop, good cop idea, axis of evil, the bad guys, the bad chemicals, the good chemicals. That's the way they talk to us like we're children. There's no bad cholesterol. There's no good cholesterol. It's just cholesterol. The, the, the good and bad refers to the direction that they're moving in the body. If it moves into the liver, they say it's good. If it moves out of the liver to be used, they say it's bad. That's, just, that's really what it is. And now, by the way, HDL and LDL aren't cholesterol. They're high-density lipoprotein. That's what HDL is. High-density lipoprotein. Do you hear the word cholesterol in there anywhere? No. And LDL? Low density lipoprotein. Do we hear the word cholesterol there? No. These are bubbles that carry cholesterol through the blood and they associate them with the, the amount of cholesterol you're making. Because uh, HDL, they say, oh, well, your HDL is, is hot, your HDL is low, supposedly. If your HDL is low, that means you're not, move, you're not moving as much cholesterol into the liver. How do they know, by the way, HDL is this ratio or this proportion of HDL to LDL or this amount of HDL or LDL is good for you or bad for you? Statistics, numbers, actuarial, uh, actuarial processing, the way insurance companies determine how old you are when you're going to die and how much you should pay. We're not statistics, people. We're biochemicals. We're not numbers, we're biology. And in terms of biochemicals and biology, the biochemistry and the biology of cholesterol, it is unbelievably vital stuff. And by the way, more marketing for you. It was the vegetable industry, the vegetable oil industry, that, uh, that promoted this nonsense about cholesterol causing heart disease. And, and, and at the same time, vegetable oil being heart protective. And guess who jumped on board right away? the American Dietetic Association, the American Heart Association, and the government, and the American Medical Association. They, they got on board really fast with it. And I don't know how much money they got paid to get on board with it, but whatever it was, it didn't take them very long to, for the AMA to agree that, oh yes, it is cholesterol that causes heart disease. This is just retarded when it comes to understanding chemistry. All right, so there's one more way in addition to, uh, in addition to your foods, and uh, the foods we eat and thoughts and feelings and our respiration or our ventilation that affects hormones. And we'll talk about that on our next Bright Side episode as we continue talking hormone health. And then we'll talk about a few things that you can, uh, oral supplements that you can take. They're not nutritional supplements. They're, they're dietary supplements that you can use. And one in particular is very, very helpful. We've talked about a lot on, the, uh, on this program. Super relaxing. Super calming, very important if you're dealing with seizure disorders or depression. We'll talk about that on our next Bright Side episode as we continue talking hormone health. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Illinois. Rec welcome Rick to the Bright Side. What's up, Rick? Good morning, Ben. Good morning. I was listening to one of your archive shows from uh, November 2012, and you were telling a caller uh, on that show that sometimes to diagnose a problem, you have to plot dots, and as you start to connect the dots, then a yes. picture begins to emerge. Yes. And what yes. I'd like to be able to Did you do, get that? Did that make sense to you when I said that? You collect the dots, you connect the dots, or collect the dots, and then connect the dots. Makes yes, sense, and, right? And, and, and so what I do to kind of facilitate that is I keep a health log. And if something's good, good bothered deal. me, or you know, something hurts or aches or something like that, I, I make a note of it. And uh, what I like to do is I like to take 30, maybe 60 seconds, just throw a bunch of dots at you here sure. and see if a picture emerges. Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Um, on uh, August 27th, I'm just going to start from... You don't need the dates. Just give me, the, just give me what's going on. Okay. I stopped uh, taking a calcium, magnesium uh, 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 complex supplement, and I started taking a, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in okay. the water that I take every day. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, a few days later, I noticed a, a lump in my throat. Uh, okay. Uh, day later, I wake with what feels like a beginning of a sinus infection in the roof of my mouth near the sinus cavity. Okay. Began to feel raw. I still had a lump in my throat. Uh, uh, as I move on, as the days pass, uh, I have a new new sore. Is this starting a couple years ago? Did you say, or is this recent? I'm just going from uh, beginning of August 27th. 
a, this a, month, okay. and a, a month and a half ago. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so you drop the calcium, magnesium, you replace it with apple cider vinegar. A couple days right. later, you notice a lump, and then you got a sinus infection. Okay, anything well, else? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I had a sinus infection, but uh, now I'm up to, to September 6th. I have a new sore on the inside of my lower right lip. Uh, the got next it. day, I have another new sore on the inside of my lower right teeth, got and the it. roof of my mouth is tender. Uh, uh, four days later, I start to take, I start a daily supplement of, of L-lysine, and I take okay. my first uh, probiotic supplement. Okay. The following day, I take my first digestive enzyme supplement. Okay. Now I'm going to move forward to uh, September 16th. I start to see what I thought were pimples on the right side of my neck. I, you're getting, I don't need all the specifics like this. The okay. mouth, you're starting to get canker sores and, and pimples in, in the, inside the mouth, and uh, this is a couple days or a couple weeks after you started the apple cider vinegar. That's what I'm getting. Canker sores have been a long-running problem. Got it. Half the time it's from biting inside my mouth while I'm chewing. Sometimes they just appear. But then, you know, what happened then is by, by the 19th, by 19th of last month, I developed a really bad rash on the right side of my neck. Okay. So, so you I progressively... Stopped. There, well, hang on, hang on, Rick. Sure. Rick, hang on just one moment, buddy. I want you to see what's happening here. Remember, you have four types of tissue in the body. You've got the, you've got the nervous tissue, you've got the connective slash muscle tissue, and then you've got the coating. That's called epithelial tissue. All your problems are in the surface, in that coating area, in the epithelia, and they're all located in the mouth area. And what this is telling me is that cells are not growing rapidly enough, or not growing correctly. Uh, these are rapid growing cells inside the mouth, and when you're experiencing some either a deficiency in nutrients or a problem with toxicity, the mouth will be the first place or one of the early places where you notice it. So what I'm hearing is there's some kind of either toxicity that's getting into your system or there's some kind of nutritional de uh, deficiency. Now, the fact that it started right away is significant, and I want to know what you were doing in addition to the apple cider vinegar that, that, made, that, that made the difference. Uh, that made it all, that uh, caused these uh, symptoms to all pile up within the space of four or five weeks. Hang tight, I'll finish up and come back from our break. But you want to be focusing, uh, Rick, on nutritional deficiencies and toxicity getting into the body. Uh, hang tight and we'll finish up, okay? And if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Okay, we're back on the bright side talking to Rick. Hey, Rick, I'm going to go fast with you, buddy, because I got a bunch of calls I want to get to. But let me uh, give you my email, and if you want to have a conversation, I'll be glad to uh, talk about anything you want if you send me an email to Ben at KSCO.com and put your phone number there. Okay, Rick? Okay. Okay, good. So here's the deal. When I said connect, uh, collect the dots before you connect the dots, you're giving me one dot, okay? Those aren't multiple dots. That's one dot. And that is the fact that skin cells, surface cells inside the mouth are not, div are not dividing correctly. That's really what's occurring. And the fact that they're not dividing correctly tells me that there's something going on. That's, uh, toxicity is getting into your system, especially if you have a history that way, or and or, because both are involved, you have some kind of nutritional deficiency. So the first thing you want to do when you have canker sores in the mouth, for everybody listening, is focus on digestive health. If you have any kind of digestive health issue, one of the first places it's going to show up is inside the mouth. Uh, if you have uh, nutritional deficiencies that are compounding it, specifically in electrical nutrients and vitamin C, that'll make it worse. Not so much the fatty nutrients, by the way, although that, they're involved too, but mostly or largely B-complex, vitamin C, and your electrolytes. I'd be pounding the Beyond Tangy Tangerine as well as doing vegetable juices and avoiding anything that causes depletion of these nutrients, especially sugar. And, you know, it's the same stuff that we talk about all the time. Digestion especially around, uh, around sh uh, uh, the absorption of the B vitamins and the electrolytes and vitamin C. If you have any issues with, uh, with uh, you're eating lots of sugar or you're getting a lot of toxicity into the blood, you may run into deficiencies on all of those nutrients, especially if you're not getting them. So BTT, pound it. Vegetable juice, pound it. Stay away from sugar. Stay away from any digestive stressors. Relax the body as best as you can. Deep breathing techniques, slow deep breathing techniques, and anything you could do to relax the muscles will also activate the parasympathetic or the healing nervous system. Really, it's all the same stuff. And I'd love to hear what the other dots are too, Rick. So if you want to send me an email, put your phone number in there. I'll definitely get back to you, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rick. Okay, Stuart in Colorado, what's up, man? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben. 
Uh, hey, Stuart. I've talked a couple of times. I have uh, basal polyps. Okay. And I have, I've been on uh, the 9D for going on. I can hear something going on there. Are you stuffy 